So, welcome everybody. Thanks very much to, for coming for uh, our uh, second artist um, interview talk uh, with Chris. Um, I'm going to I'm going to read from uh, uh, Chris's double page spread in yesterday's uh, Yorkshire Post magazine. So why why waste the uh, good journalism and uh, I'll, I'll use I'll use the intro. Um, so, um, Chris uh, has always been fascinated with the human form and uh, her portraits uh, I've seen her uh, get through to the quarterfinals of the uh, Sky, Art, Sky Art Portrait Artist of the Year in 2020. And for the last couple of years, for, which was, has resulted in this exhibition, um, she's been uh, working with Northern Ballet. Um, and being inspired by the uh, Casanova production, uh, and this is this is resulted in the show. The Casanova studies dance joy connect these um, fantastic uh, series of uh, original paintings um, and iPad sketches and drawings and monographs, and so it's been marvellous to show them all. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and so I guess I guess I guess I don't know, talk the whole thing. I think ask some questions. And, yeah, we've kind of prepared some questions. Yeah, because uh, uh, I prefer to uh, people to ask questions and just you know answer some questions than stand up and do a talk or anything like that. Um, so we, we sort of thought about the questions to start off with. Um, I don't know whether you want to do this formally or. Well, I mean, do you want do you want um, some? Um, uh, interjection from the audience, would you like questions to, sort of to flow as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, as we're yes. going along, feel free. Um, I, I just want to say thank you to start off with for people coming along this afternoon and I think it's a real honour that people have come to uh, listen to and look at the paintings, so thank you for coming along and um, it's uh, it's been great to uh, to work with Northern Ballet as well, and they, they were really uh, warm and friendly, and um, and that's how I was able to do this um, this exhibition. Um, so, Joss's yeah. first question. Yeah. So, 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 your previous work, you're doing lots of um, uh, portraiture, um, and, and, and and this kind of led to the. Led in some ways to this exhibition, you commissioned portraits, um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's sort of it's always curious when sort of art, artists, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of making work in one way, portraits, landscapes, and, and then um, they, you know do something different. So I guess yeah, that, it's interesting when you're planning to show artists, you know, what what led to the sort of a change in practice, what led to the to uh, yeah, well, it, it sort of began during lockdown, really. Um, I was doing portraits. Um, I, did, I did a fine art degree many years ago, and I worked from the life model for three years. So I just went into the life room, threw and painted for three years. And I would say that was really, well, that, that was the start, and that was really good, because obviously, if you've got a live person there, you, you've got to really think about what you're doing. Um, it's not like just working from a photograph. I don't know what backgrounds you're all from, but it's obviously not working from secondary source imagery. You've got to sort it out. It's a figure in space, and you've got to work out how to depict space and how do you depict the colours. And um, so I did draw in charcoal and painted in oils when I was a student, and I would say my work was quite a bit more, well, it was quite gestural, probably a bit more abstract than this is. Um, and then I had a long break from painting because I, I, I taught as my um, career. Um, but when I came back to it, I thought, well, do I do landscapes? Do I do figures? What do I do? And I did some landscape painting. Um, and when I left teaching, I, I put my work in a um, uh, in a sort of an art fair in London, and I put some portraits in there as well. 
and somebody said, oh, your portraits are really good. <laughs> um, and I got a lot of feedback about my portraits and I thought, oh, maybe I should do portraits then, maybe, I'm, maybe that's my thing, you know. Um, so, um, so yeah, I did quite a few portraits. Uh, I did a self-portrait, entered it into Portrait Artist of the Year, and um, I was quite surprised when they rang me up and asked me to go on the programme. Um, and then after the programme, I, I carried on doing portraits, and then I thought, mm, I want to challenge myself a bit more because it's okay to just keep doing the same things, but you know, you want to be able to um, challenge yourself. You don't want to think at the start of a painting, oh, I can do this. And, and then I know how the end result's going to look. <laughs> you'd, you'd often, even with your portraiture, you'd often uh, uh, incorporate like sort of fashion elements, really, the, the, the pattern and fashion parts. And, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, that, that. Well, the, the most recent portraits that I was doing, I must admit, I just worked on a grey ground, the grey ground being the background colour. And, and, and most of them, I must admit, were from photographs. Um, unlike what I'd done, as I said, for my degree. So they were from photographs, they were from flat images. But I used uh, Procreate on, um, in, on, on my um, iPad to uh, work out the tones and colours first before I painted them. And I, and I found Procreate and the iPad really, really useful. Because um, when you're at art college, they don't teach you about painting, mixing colours, about tone or anything like that. And um, I, I learned a lot just using Procreate, actually. And, but it, it, these ones are pro. Yeah. No, no, so those are, those are the iPad drawings. I'm sorry, sorry, I'm still back on my portrait paintings no, that know. I was doing prior to this exhibition. Yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I thought I wanted to challenge myself to do full figures, which are obviously more challenging than just doing the portrait, and also figures in relationship to one another. Um, and it was quite difficult during lockdown, because not you know, you can only draw your family so many times. Um, so you kind of, I just thought, who, who, shall I, who shall I draw, you know? Um, and my studio's quite near to Northern Ballet, and I was following um, some of their posts on Instagram. In fact, the, the lady who was the principal soloist, Hannah Bateman, she, she was going to come to one of my monoprint classes, I believe, and then it got cancelled because of lockdown. And I followed her on Instagram and said to her, do you mind if I um, do some drawings from, from Melbourne Ballet? Um, I've been to a few classes there. I do like dance. Um, I've, I've never, I mean, most of and I used to go to Jai, who used to do that kind of dance for a long time. Um, and, um, and so I started drawing, um, I started with, with this one, I think, of um, Hannah Bateman in Casanova. And um, I just thought it was quite a dynamic image, really, the composition. So, um, and I've, I've been doing this one over the last year, really, because I started it in quite an appropriate way with a grey background. Like um, this, like... Well, no, again, that is an appropriate image. Sorry, I didn't put any of the early stages. That's I right. could have done that. This, this is what I do sometimes: is I take a, well, I. I I think I just drew that freehand on Procreate. Yeah. Or sometimes I will take a photograph of the painting as it's going along, put it into Procreate, and then try out different colours so it's not as much risk. <laughs> and um, so that was quite useful. Uh, so the colours have changed in this quite a lot. <clears throat> when I first did it, they were quite realistic colours that were like a photograph, I would say. <clears throat> um, but. And, and I don't want them to look like a photograph, and I want them to look... Um, one of the things, I suppose, about working from life is you, you want to suggest that colour and light and space and all those things. So, um, am I going off the first... No, no, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's <laughs> right, it's so anyway, so I did say to... I did ask, I did say, I did ask Hannah Bateman and said, when lockdown finishes, can I come and work with in the studios and see you rehearsing and, um, and just draw them live, really. Um, yeah, well, well that's, that's the next, that's my, my next question was, um, what was it like um, being in the rehearsals, being there in sort of a, a fly on the wall whilst they're uh, you know, doing all the, I guess all the, the more private, intricate kind of practicing and working out? Or, or yeah, 
Um, well, you know, I was very fortunate to, to be able to go in to Northern Valley, especially as they were all still wearing masks and we still had to test each time we went in and put a mask on and um, they, they were very um, secure, you know, they all wore masks when they were doing their dancing, which must have been quite taxing for them um, because they're real athletes, you know. Um, and I suppose it's, it, you know, it's like going into anything that you're not used to, going into an environment where it's all very, um, it's, 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 it's just different, isn't it? You know, and there are all these young, young people there who are really highly trained and um, very committed and dedicated. Um, and I would just kind of sit at the side. I didn't want to intrude too much. And I brought my iPad in because I thought I don't want to make a big mess. And also it was good for taking photographs, but also for taking film. Um, and I, I could draw on it as well. So I just used my iPad when I was in there. The, 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 the so yeah, so I put in some that I did really on the spot. You know, this is a, the pianist, of course, because you've got live music as well, which is even, even in the rehearsal. The yeah, in the rehearsals they have live music, and um, so these were the ones that I just did on the spot really quick. Um, but when you try and draw them, obviously they're just moving all the time. So it's like if you, if you try to draw them. Um, That's great. You, you have to be really quick and it ends up a lot of scribble most of the time which does show a lot of movement in it um, and then I was able to take my own photographs so this one you know I could kind of focus in on the, the, the things that I liked rather than relying on the images that Northern Ballet put out um, and, um, and then I would go back home and draw some of those in those photographs that I'd taken at home on my iPad. Um, and um, so then, you know, so this one um, is, that, that's the drawing that I did on my iPad. That I, the only, only way you can probably see it is because um, I had it printed out as a sheet clay, which is like um, a jet, you know, um, jet printer really isn't it but it's fantastic quality so I've used a pencil on Procreate and if you look at it it's like a really pencil quality that you get and it really the guy does look like it's uh... yeah and um, and it was nice because the I could go home and draw uh, actually I didn't take this photograph but I could go home and draw and then the dancers could see that I'd take photographs of them and drawn them and they really liked that I think they quite liked the novelty of having somebody in there and um, uh, draw them. It's interesting, interesting sequence of collaborations, isn't it? You've got, you've got um, a pianist for music, and yeah. you've got you drawing, and then, and then you've got the, the structure of it is all a collaboration as well, isn't it? Because it's the text and the choreography. It's, it's a yeah, because when I went to the dress rehearsals, the guy who wrote uh, Ian Kelly, who wrote the book Casanova, he came in as well to the to the rehearsals and um, and he collaborated with Kenneth Tyndall, the choreographer, to put the ballet together, so an author.